Good afternoon. Um, so I've been meditating on this scripture. I'm going to tell you ahead of time. It's most likely that the phone will cut out before um, I finish the entire thing. So in the event that it does, don't worry. I will break it up in increments. We will get through this. I think this is going to be amazing. Um, so I'd just like to pretty much let the Holy Spirit take over. I ask that he directs this word. I ask that his power rests upon this word and that it accomplishes everything that the Lord means for it to do. In Jesus' name. So we're going to be reading from Ephesians chapter 1. We're going to read verse 1 all the way through 22. Again, it's probably going to cut out, but I will make sure to finish it this before the end of today god willing start with the first verse blessed be the god and father of our lord jesus christ who has blessed us in christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places so what is that exactly what is every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places i want us to look at some of god's promises in Psalm 23, 6, it says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. John 14, 3 says, And if I go and prepare a place, I will come again and receive you to myself. How many of us know that Jesus is coming back, family? Like a thief in the night. Hallelujah. Are you ready for his return? I know I am. And he is preparing a place for you. He's preparing a place for me. And in his father's house are many rooms. Amen. And we know the way there because Jesus is the way. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. We are seated with Christ in heavenly places. We are citizens of heaven. We are sojourners passing through the earth. And heaven is our final destination. Heaven is our home. Hallelujah. There will be no strife, no discord, no violence between any living thing in this prepared place. Isaiah 11, 6 to 8 says, The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat. The cow and the bear shall graze. Their young shall lie down together. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the cobra, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. Can you imagine such peace between all of creation? This is what God intended all along, a place where fear is no longer merited or necessary. Even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. Did you know that you were chosen? Did you know that you were pre-elected? You didn't choose God. You didn't decide to come to him. The father is the one who draws us to him. He is the one who draws us. So you were handpicked by God. Before you had a name, before you were conceived, before your very first developments, he chose you. Before creation began, before he declared a separation between the light and the dark, before the expanse of the heavens, before the mountains were raised up and the valleys laid low, before the boundaries of the steep sea were established saying this far and no further shall you go. God wanted you on his team. Amen. And he already know. He already knows because he is the first and the last, the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, who would reject him and who would not. Amen. So he chose us before the foundation of the world so that we could be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us. Let's take a look at the Greek definition of the word predestined to catch the full meaning. Foreordained, decided or appointed beforehand. That means in advance, predetermined. 
you are far from a second thought. You were at the forefront of God's mind. He consecrated you. He set you apart for a time such as this. What did he predestine us for? The next verse says, adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ. The word adoption in Greek means the place and condition of a son given to one whom it does not naturally belong. Let me remind you, before we placed our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, and not only made him our savior, but Lord of our life, we were naturally children of wrath, who according to John 1, 12, it says to all who did receive him, meaning Jesus, and believe in his name, he gave us the right to become children of God. He gave us the right to become children of God. We were not always children of God. In Roman culture, the son or daughter who was adopted would have a change of family. We were adopted into a royal family, brothers and sisters. God is now our father. You are now his child. You are now his son. You are now his daughter. Before your father was the devil. But we have a change of name as well. He gives us a new name and identity in him. Another thing in Roman culture is that they would have a change of home. Well, our home was the earth, but we, our home is now heaven. We, are, we went from our home being the earth to being seated in heavenly places. And it, it was also a change of responsibility, which our responsibility is now the Great Commission. We are called to the Great Commission as ambassadors of Christ. According to Roman law, an adopted child could not be disowned. John 10.29 says, No one can snatch me out of my father's hand. I do need to clarify that this pertain pertains to believers who have repented of their sin and have been born again. They are a new creation in Christ. Old things have passed away and all things have become new. Next verse. According to the purpose of his will. His will, not ours. According to his glorious grace, and grace means unmerited, undeserved, unearned favor. You, yes you, have a purpose. Your life is far from meaningless. You should not be drifting aimlessly because God has an assignment with your name on it. It is tailor-made and was birthed by everything you have gone through. What the enemy meant for evil, God is working out for your good. What does that even mean? It means he is turning the tide in your favor. It means he is flipping the script. It means he is rewriting your story and he won't waste a chapter. What the devil had planned for your destruction, for your downfall and demise, God is going to use to raise up others. Raise them up out of what? To lift them up out of the pit of whatever they've fallen in. The pit of addiction. The pit of lust and perversion. Perversion. The pit of anguish and despair. The pit of grief and loss. The pit of unforgiveness and a murderous heart. Not by any might or power of our own, but by the immeasurable power of his Holy Spirit. Next verse. With which he has blessed us in the beloved, who is Jesus. You are accepted in the beloved. And it matters not who didn't accept you it doesn't matter who di didn't approve of you. It does not matter who didn't appreciate you. It doesn't matter who rejected you, abandoned you, discarded you, or cast you aside. Because the Bible says, even if your mother and father would forsake you, I never will.